Okay, at this point we learned uh, a little bit of uh, general information about the data set. Let's uh, move on with building our first uh, model. Uh, I'm going to close uh, some of these displays, just minimize them so that uh, they, we can always reference them later on. Uh, there are several different modeling tools available to you. My recommendation is uh, uh, you should always start with the simple decision tree because it allows you to make uh, a very uh, simple judgments about the quality of your data and see what's going on in there. So I'm going to click uh, on view, open activity window. And at this point, we're ready to do modeling cycle. So I click model button. And uh, notice, in my situation, uh, first of all, these are the modeling variables here. So I'm going to sort them in the file order. And my target variable will be the delinquent account. Again, it's uh, coded as 0 and 1. 1 stands for delinquency, and I'm interested in modeling the delinquency. Now, the next important thing, we need to choose the modeling engine. As I have recommended initially, uh, the very first engine should be Cart because it gives you the results very quickly. And because delinquency is uh, one of the, uh, it's a binary response variable, so in this case, the analysis type will be classification. Had I had a continuous response, I would have worked with regression, but in this case, the target variable has only two distinct values, zero and one, and it's best to model it as a classification setting. Okay, so delinquency is my target. All of the remaining variables will be my predictors. So there are basically seven of them, and I'm excluding ID variable because uh, it's not uh, useful uh, to make generalized predictions. Uh, the next thing that you should always set up when you're running CART is you need to decide on the test method. And the default is cross-validation that's designed for small data sets. In my case, I have a pretty large data set, so I'll ask CART to randomly partition my data set into 50% learn and 50% test. Now, the reason you need to have a test sample is because uh, just like in the classical uh, testing for students, you always learn on one set of problems, but you are being evaluated or tested on a different set of problems. So the same thing here. Part of the data, well, namely random 50%, will be used to build a number of models, and then the remaining 50% will be used to evaluate the performance so they can have uh, a fair judgment in terms of what's working and uh, what's not working. Okay, so this is the part. The, the last thing that you need to decide when you run CART is uh, you need to set some uh, limits on the segment sizes. Now, what uh, you may not have seen CART before yet, the, the classification tree that it will build essentially presents a segmentation solution, and you need to decide on some of the acceptable sizes of those underlying segments. So what I will do here, I will require each internal segment to have at least 100 accounts and each terminal segment to have at least 30 accounts, which is uh, usually uh, good measures of, uh, from the statistical point of view of uh, the number of records to be generalized. Okay, so I set target predictors, I set uh, some simple limits, now I'm ready to build my first model. So I clicked on the start button. It proceeds by analyzing data set, doing all of the internal manipulation, and uh, very quickly comes back with my first model. Now notice, the model here is presented by a single split point based on revolving utilization. In the original data set, uh, the delinquency rate is 6.1%. If you cut all the records with revolving utilization less than 39%, the delinquency rate goes down to 2.5%. Otherwise, all the records where you have uh, greater credit utilization than 39%, the delinquency rate goes up to 13.7%. Again, this is a very first model, and it's a very simple description of what's going on. You can look at it at a more... Uh, uh, advanced level here, or and uh, when you click on uh, three details button, you can actually see all of those rules uh, it, uh, written and uh, kind of explicitly presented for you.
Now, on one side, this is a very simplistic model. We're using only one variable, one cut point, and yet the ROC on the test sample went all the way up to 70%. And again, when you have no model, ROC typically stands at uh, 50% or 0.5. In this case, ROC on the test sample went up to 0.7, which is uh, a very good result. Now, whether this is the final model, by all means not, it only highlights that whatever we obtained at this point really makes sense. Uh, I don't, uh, there's, there's an important variable that pops up and you, you get into the model right away. Now the next thing that you can do is you can explore uh, what happens if you look at the larger models. I mean the, the reason why Cart suggested this simple model as the optimal is because it has uh, pretty much uh, the relative cost of 0.593. However, you can click on any model in the modeling sequence and you see some of these models are pretty large and elaborate because we have a lot of records in the data set. Uh, and each model will be characterized by its own performance in terms of ROC test. And again, ROC Learn is uh, just interesting to look at. The largest model will have the greatest Learn ROC, but we're really interested in is ROC on the test sample, and we want to ma maximizing that measure. As you look at different trees, you'll see that the smaller models will tend to have smaller Learn ROC, and yet they may have a much better test ROC because they generalize really well. So if you play around with some of these models and look at all the different modeling configurations, so for example, if you increase number of nodes to something like uh, uh, 11, uh, now you have 20 nodes, and your ROC is already up to 0.74, so you can move around left and right and try different configurations and see that, well, in this case, it looks like the model that has uh, 20 nodes has a reasonable generalization in terms of ROC on the test sample of 0.74. Now, once you have this model, each node is represented by a segment. So now, for example, this node here, you have 18% uh, a default rate that's compared to 6% in the root node. So you have a ba basically 3 to 1 lift as far as default rate goes. And uh, when you click on that node and look inside under rules, you can see that all that matters for that node to come, that for that segment to be described, is the revolving utilization needs to be greater than 70.5%. On the other hand, you have some nodes here uh, that may have. Uh, a very small uh, default rate. So you can, uh, for example, look at this one. It has 1.8 uh, default rate. And again, when you click on that node, you go on the rules, and you see that for this one, revolving utilization has to be less than point, uh, uh, less than basically 11.5 percent. So it looks like revolving utilization is a very important predictor. Whether it's the only variable used, by all means not. And if you click on the splitters, you can see that the entire segmentation partitioning here uses a whole bunch of other variables. It's just that first it relies on revolving utilization, and then it starts kicking in age, uh, debt ratio, monthly income, and all of the other variables. So if you at this point, uh, if you wanted to present your findings to someone else, you can either pick this tree or any simpler tree, uh, print it out, and talk about it in terms of segmentation and partitioning of your data. So you can see, okay, if you use these simple rules, then uh, look, we found a different subpopulation or different segments among all of our banking accounts that have uh, different um, default rates. And uh, once you study those rules, you have a, a very simple way to implement and to deploy all of your findings. Now, unfortunately, a single tree does not give you a kind of a simple uh, way to present it in terms of a formula or in terms of graphs, because the end result is shown in, in the form of a classification tree. So our next modeling technique will uh, attack the same problem from a very different point of view and you'll see the type of insights that can be gained uh, by doing it the alternative way.